good, what's going on? As you can see, my car is packed to the max and we are heading out on a pretty decent trip. Um, Today is the first day of my sort of annual leave from work. I am heading up into Namakaland, up into the Northern Cape. We might even go through to Namibia. You can't see where I'm pointing, but it's somewhere up there. Um, and yeah, I've got a bunch of targets that have sort of eluded me over the last couple of years. So we're gonna hit it pretty hard, give it a red hot crack and see what we're gonna turn up. Um, key species are gonna be some of the bitters. We're gonna look at the the Macaulay Dwarf Adder, see if we can't get some mini horned adders, some normal horned adders, uh, coral snakes, bug out house snakes, some of the shovel snouts, um, yeah, the Cape coral snakes like I mentioned, and we should see tons and tons of geckos, so I'm really excited about it, and I've been frothing for it for the last couple of weeks, so yeah, I've got a, about a four hour drive ahead of me now, and Hopefully along the way we'll bump into some tortoises, uh, maybe some snakes crossing the road. We're going to have to give it a crack and see. But yeah, um, this is going to be a pretty epic series of videos. I'll hopefully cut it up into a whole bunch of series. Um, but until then, I will check in when we find our first hope of the trip. So we're still on the road. We've got the jams today. A uh, bit of a throwback. It is Thursday after all. But um, yeah, we're still on the road. I haven't seen a heck of a lot. It is hot as hell outside. So it's only going to be a shape of things to come for the rest of the trip. But we've got, I don't know, 250 kilometers to go till I get to my destination. So we still got loads of time to find something before we get into the good stuff. just stopped at a little petrol station here just on the side of the highway and it brings us to our first herb of the trip Let's see if I can just get a good look at him here and that is a meaty meaty cave skink he's just hiding there in the grass Let's see if I can get a decent look at him there you go he's just was basking next to this little piece of grass here but yeah, nice to get a first herb on the board Something really common, but on a trip like this, I'm pretty much, yeah, I'm listing quite neurotically. So anything I see, we're going to document, photograph, and get some video of. But yeah, Cape Skink, first one on the board. So we arrived at our first stop. I am overnighting here for two nights. It's a little guest farm. Just like in the Macaulay, super simple. Running an extension lead from the electricity there. Got my small little one-man mission tent, which I think is going to suffer in the wind a bit. Um, but I'll probably just move the chimney, put it here. But yeah, I'm gonna go in a little bit. Head out over to just behind these crawls here. There's a bunch of rocks where the guys told me they see a lot of snakes and tortoises. So I'm gonna give that a go. Chimney's looking so round. This noise is gonna destroy it tonight. But yeah, super chuffed to finally be here, and let's get after it. Well, it is now just almost quarter to ten to seven in the evening, obviously, and I just found our first major target for today. At least I think it is. I'm going to have to double check, but I'm pretty sure this is the clip Runt Pygmy Gecko, which is literally the reason why I came all the way out to this farm. You can see he's got that sort of orangey peachy colored tail with these sort of chevrons all the way across the body. Really small looking geckos. As you can tell, he's got those little toe pad sensors on each one of the tail, or each one of the fingers or the toes. So it depends where you look at it. Um, but yeah, this is really great. Um, I wasn't expecting to get these so early and so easily. As you can see, I'm in a mass of habitat. There's just so much habitat. So it's pretty epic to get them this soon enough. Pretty much bail tomorrow if I need to. But yeah, we're gonna stick it out here and hopefully turn up a couple more. And grab some photographs, obviously. And we are going to see if we can't turn a couple more up. I wonder if this is as big as they get, or perhaps they get a bit bigger. So hopefully we can find out. 
So here's just a better look, only slightly better look at this Clipfront Pygmy Gecko. Um, yeah, these things are, are really small, so it's, it's quite hard to focus on them and, and give you a good idea. As you can see, it's got these really nice dots and sort of chevron bands all the way down the body. Um, you can see this one has a partially regrown tail. Um, these, these tiny little toe pads. You know, all in all, like a really good looking gecko, just to give you an idea for size reference thanks to my thumb. Um, as you were seeing in the previous video, I mean, these things are tiny, but super stuffed. Trying to get out of the wind here, but I just got another one of these pygmy geckos, these here. Uh, super chuffed. This wasn't even five meters away from the other spot. There were actually a couple under here, but I only managed to get hands on this one. That's a super good start, and hopefully signs of much more to come. Yeah, possible first life before the trip. Just out behind this rock outcrop to get out of the wind. But you can see how amazing this habitat is. These are all sort of like quartzy fields here. Got deep rock cracks and fishes everywhere. I think this area is going to be really good for the tortoises tomorrow after I found that shell. But I mean, this habitat is absolutely incredible. So hopefully with a bit of luck. Actually, you can't look in there. I need to torch in the crack. But... Yeah, hopefully a bit of luck tomorrow we'll bump into some tortoises. Gonna do a little bit of night cruising once it gets dark. It's half past seven in the evening and you can see the sun is still pretty high in the sky. It hasn't um it hasn't set yet. But hopefully it sets maybe by about 8 30 or so and then we can get on the road and hopefully turn up some more stuff. I just switched up locations. I'm just in these rocky sort of sections, um, I just sent up this little guy. It's just a common sand lizard, Pedoplanus linealata pacelli. You can see he's got the really nice pale spots on the side, which is sort of the key identifying feature. These guys run around like absolute lightning. Um, I just got really lucky and managed to just get him under a rock and then he just dashed into a bush. Um, you can see really good looking lizards. Um, the light's not fantastic. Doesn't really do him justice, but I'm sure once I photograph him, um, I'll check a couple of photographs at the end of the video and you guys can get a, a good look at him. I mean, you have a look at his little claws here. These guys are built for speed. Pretty cool. Second species of the trip. So we're getting on to stuff. This is a real bummer. This is another one of my key targets today, just from that scoot sitting over there. I know that it's Tentorius, it's a ten tortoise. Um, it's unfortunate, this is a small one, but it's well, well dead. Um, the guys are saying here at the farm that they've had little to no rain for the last couple of years, but it actually rained last week, he said, so things should be moving and shaking, but this guy's moving and shaking days are long over. Um, still nice to know that they're in the area though, so I'm gonna log this quick record. So it's now just gone 8 o'clock, as you can see the sun is just beginning to set and the light is actually super nice and soft and it's quite cool thankfully because tomorrow it's going to be blazing hot um, in this part of the Karoo it just gets ridiculous but super hyped, can head back to the farmhouse now uh, probably uh, head up some dinner and then we go for a little drive tonight so you know what time it is, just heading out on a little road cruise. Just before I started filming I just turned out of the farm, and the farm where I'm staying and I saw a bat-eared fox sort of zipping around, um, which is pretty cool. But yeah, we're just probably only going to do a really short cruise tonight, maybe 20 or 30 k's, just because I'm not a huge fan of driving on these sort of sand roads, just because it's difficult A to see things, B to stop and they can be pretty rutted and it just yeah it's not ideal cruising but we got a chance to bump into some geckos and maybe some of the other namaco specials we still haven't hit a snake and we're now on well i guess 
day two of the trip, so hopefully that luck changes tonight. I'll let you know once we find something. Cool, so we just got our first herp off road cruising. I just got a new rig, so I'm trying to see how well it works. But right here, we've got a common giant gecko. This little female, unfortunately, she's um, missing a tail, as you can see. So she's really not looking her best. But these geckos are super common, so I'm pretty sure we're going to see heaps of them. So I'm not going to dwell too much on her. As you can see, they've got these massive heads. Um, and usually uh, they have these really pretty tails, but as you can see, this little lady has lost his come back, sister. We went on with you. Um, <laughs> come back. Come on, just hang out for a little bit. Um, but yeah, like I said, we are probably going to see loads. We'll just give you a final look and she can run off into the distance. Just please don't get hit by a car, although this road is pretty quiet. Cool, we're going to head back and get on to it. So we just cruised up our second gecko species of the night. This is the quartz gecko, uh, Pachydactylus. Come back, brother. Pachydactylus latirostris. Um, these guys are really common. It's I'm just gonna grab it. These guys are really common. We will probably see scores and scores of them over the next couple nights. Nights, should I say? <clears throat> but yeah, nice to get on the board with something else other than the giant common giant geckos you can see these guys don't have nails on their toe pads um on their toes should i say but yeah really nice dorsal pattern and overall just a really good looking gecko um this one actually looks like a gravid female she looks pretty heavy over on the rear side there but yeah things are pretty quiet right now so i reckon we're gonna turn back and call it a night. I've had a, a long day cruising, so yeah, I'm just gonna let this girl go. Adios. And then, yeah, we're gonna head back now. Oh, we just got another common giant gecko, but he just ran under my car. Get a bit of a look at him. I need to get him out of there because I do not want to drive him over. Come on, brother. Get out of here. This is going to be a bit painful, but let's see if we can get him out. Come on, go the other way, please. He just scooted out, but yeah, we're going to turn around now and give it the loop back and see what we can get. See there my car is parked in the middle of the road because I came to a screeching halt. I saw what I, I saw thought what I saw was a snake in the road. And here we go. Stunning looking horn dudder who's really grumpy now that he knows the gig is up. So get this guy to calm down for a split second. As he's leaping out there into attack mode, as people would say. But he's just being defensive. Have a go at the colors on this thing, and you'll notice you can see automatically how they move in the sand like that. How they almost sidewind across there. But if I can just get this guy to relax, I'll give you a good look at him. So you got that classic horned out ahead, got some nice looking pale blue gray flecks on the side there. Um, and it's typical with the color of the sand, um, that's what color the snakes are. They're highly variable, so yeah, super chuffed. This is the first thing I've seen all night cruising, so not a bad start. First snake of the trip, that is Cordalis, the Hondara. So what you do when you're in pristine habitat, you come back to the farm house that you're staying on and you torch some cracks. There's just a, let's see if I can focus on this rock cracker. It's just a big old southern rock agama. Terrible footage, but yeah, he's just sleeping in this rock crack. Not gonna wake him up. We're we gonna carry on. Return is Gecko from the Limpopo video. And this is the same member of the genus. They do these little 
squeaking threat displays. Um, yeah, this is a same member of the genus, but this is just the western variety. Oh, or should I say the western form? Totally different species, but they look identical. This is a, quite a small one. I think it actually, oh yeah, if you have a good look here, you can see she's actually got eggs inside of her. So we're not going to mess with this girl too much. Quite a small one to be carrying eggs, actually. So it is quite interesting. But yeah, I was just getting ready to pretty much call it a night and head to sleep and on this little girl. So it's another species for the list. So you can't make this up, but I just finished filming that little Bourbon's gecko and I'm just having a look and right next to my camp chair, my camp table, should I say, there's a little male common giant gecko, common giant gecko, just hanging out right here next to my campsite. I mean, literally I'm my tent is there, my light is there, and this guy was just hanging out. I didn't even see him. I suspect that because of my light being on here, all the insects, there's a bunch of insects chilling out on the wall here. I suspect that he was just moving in here to get a little feed on some of these little bugs. See, he's a, a decent size. Please don't bite me. But yeah, has a nice little tail, unlike that. Unfortunate little female we saw earlier. Like I was saying, they got those big, big eyes, big chunky heads. Pretty much any little bug that comes close to them is just destined to be destroyed. But yeah, we're going to see a lot of these in the next couple of days. So I'm not even going to disturb this guy too much. Might just grab a quick in situ. And yeah, I think I'm going to call it a night and I'll catch you guys in the morning. Good morning, it's now the next day after that. Bit of road cruising last night. Uh, we didn't get too much, a couple of new guys for the trip and all those geckos. But I'm just heading out to another spot. I'm gonna do a little bit of active searching just before it warms up too much. Uh, to be in this area, once it gets to sort of 10, 11 o'clock, the day just becomes almost unhurable to, to actively look for stuff. Um, under rocks and in rock cracks and, and that sort of stuff it just becomes too hot. So hopefully we'll see something cruising across the road on our way there, maybe a tortoise or sort of a sand snake or something like that. But yeah, when we get to the spot, I will check in and then hopefully we'll get start with some really good Namakaland herping. So I just stopped near this rock outcropper. I saw a lizard running across the road, but I, I lost it unfortunately. But I stopped and found this really handsome looking dude. He doesn't look that handsome in the video. This is just a large male southern rock agama. And then he was just sitting, there's actually there was a female nearby. So let me just give you a view of what the rock looks like. These sort of like big boulders with these tight fishes. And yeah, he's just hanging out. Oh, there he goes, I spooked him. But yeah, we're gonna head off. I'm heading about four or five k's in that direction to go visit a spot and hopefully we'll turn up some goods. So it's been an especially slow morning. Um, other than those agamas I showed you just now, I just picked up this little Garigodal lizard who's just zoozing across the road. It's quite a small one, I guess, probably like double the size. They're really common on these little rocky plains and they just sort of sit and bask on little rocks like that. But yeah, he was fortunately just running across the road so I managed to just Grab one Tim. Yeah, nice to actually get another another herp on the board. But yeah, I'm going to just grab a couple pictures real quick, and then we're gonna head on back. If you were thinking these are hay bales, you'd be correct. I was just getting ready to leave to go on a walk in the heat of the day, <clears throat> and I just saw this little western. Three sharp skink, he was just basking, well, half in the shade, half in the sun. <clears throat> I just managed to grab out, get hounds on him. Super chuffed, I've actually only seen one of these before and it managed to get away. Unfortunately, this dude's missing his tail, so he's not gonna photograph well, but a life in hand is a life in hand, as they say. So hopefully this is a sign that I might see some stuff in my walk now. The last 10 15 minutes, I've been going from this bush to that 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 bush to try and pick up this little Namaqua sand lizard. 
See, he's got these beautiful long tails and these sort of yellow, sort of dorsal stripes. Um, they're obviously plain white, and you can see they've got these crazy toes for just sort of speeding through the sand. Um, these guys are really common. Um, I saw a few of them earlier today. I just wasn't able to get hands on any. And this guy was obliging, so at least we got hands on this one. So it's just another species foot trip. So here's just an in situ look, or an in situ look. You should watch my man Smith Logic's video. He'll tell you all about it. But uh, common sand lizard just hanging out here. I'm um, surprised he hasn't been spooked. So this is just the habitat. Same place as it was <clears throat> yesterday, well, last evening. It's just endless amounts of rocks, heat, sand. Uh, but yeah, it's about quarter past two in the afternoon and it must be about, I don't know, high 30s. It's ridiculously hot and I'm just bunkered up under this bit of a rock overhang just to get a bit of respite from the heat. Um, I haven't seen much besides two of those Pedioplanus, two of those um, Namakwa sand lizards, and then just the three-striped skink. I think it's a western three-striped skink. That's what the common name is. But yeah, I'm gonna hang out here for a bit and try to wait out a bit of the heat, and then I'm probably gonna head through to the little ridge there and walk, walk my way down around, around the side. Hopefully see some signs of some tortoises. So that was two hours later. Well, this is two hours later, should I say? But I'm heading out from under my little bit of shade here, and we are back out walking. Heat, although it's cooled down considerably. So I just flipped up this really upset common giant gecko. Um, it's quite unusual to see them during the day. So, which may be the reason why this guy's extra upset. He was just hunkered down under a rock. Um, but yeah, he's doing this really weird thing where he's sort of opening his mouth and like you can see here, he's swaying side to side and sort of hissing. Um, it's not something I've seen often with the species, once or twice previously. Um, but yeah, quite strange. You see he also sort of waves that tail from left to right and up and down, which could explain why so many of them have truncated or, or regrown tails. But yeah, I don't want to stress this guy out too much. I'm just going to grab a couple of photographs and I'm just going to put his rock back and chuck him back under the rock and let him go on his way. So it doesn't appear like it's a very good year for tortoises around at this farm. This is another 10 tortoise shell, unfortunately, and no one is home. This guy's been dead for a while. You can see it's hardly got any of the scoots on him still. Big, uh, big old hole right through the top. But yeah, it's unfortunate. I was really hoping to see one of these guys alive at this uh, locality. So it doesn't look like I'm going to have that much luck. But we still got four or five hours of daylight. So let's see if we can make it happen. So as you can see, the sun is pretty much just set out here in the Macquiland. And I just turned up. A really nice looking western three stripe skink. Western stripe skink, I'm not sure what the common name is. Um, this is actually the first specimen I managed to get in hand with a complete tail. Um, I caught that little one earlier just at my accommodation. Um, and I'd seen one of these last year when I was chasing a Karoo sand snake into a bush. So I could either catch a snake or the skink. And unfortunately the skink got away. But yeah, super chuffed to get hands on this guy. And I'm desperately in need of pictures of these guys as I don't have any. So I'm going to shoot some pictures quickly before the light diminishes. But yeah, super chuffed. Um, we're going to head out probably about half an hour, go do some night cruising. We've only got dirt roads around here like we did last night. So I'm not super hopeful to turn up any snakes, but sure we'll turn up some geckos. But let's get going. I don't know how well you can be able to see this because it's getting quite dark. But <laughs> stabbing on a thorn tree here is just a common sand lizard from one of the butcher birds or the Jackie Hangmans, whatever they like to call them. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Just see him parked up in here on this tiny little bush. So here you go, another unexpected lifer. This is Maroli's sub sub something or other. Um, I have seen these guys before in Namibia, but never here in South Africa. So that's pretty great. Um, he was just zooming around here right around my campsite as I was getting ready to pack up. So 
a nice uh, welcome find. Another one to add to the list. These guys are built for speed. You can see they've got these crazy rear and front limbs with these long toes, these little nails on each, and they are literally just, oh yeah, he gave me a bit of a run around, but yeah, glad to get hands on it. And this is, yeah, another one for the list, another Morellis. Awesome. And that is that. We are finished for the first two nights that I stayed at this amazing farm out here, literally in the middle of nowhere. And now we've got about a 150 kilometer drive all along this dirt road to the nearest town. And then we're going to hit the tar and probably drive another 120 kilometers to get to where I'm spending the next couple days, which is going to be a drastic change in scenery and hopefully a whole lot of really interesting herbs. So looking forward to it. Hopefully we're going to spot something crossing the road at some point. Um, and if we do, you guys know you'll be the first to check it out. I almost caused a giant accident on myself, swerving in the road, trying to stop this gorgeous looking Agama. The answer is yes. Um, this is, I'm pretty sure this is the Agama Hispida. This is the Southern Spiny Agama. This is a female, so it doesn't have the nice sort of green color that the males have. Super chuffed to the fact that I managed to stop and get it, but I was hoping to get to my next destination, but now we have to photograph things on the side of the road quickly, but rather that than not find anything. Come herping in the Mackerelland, they said. Come drive on 150 kilometers of dirt road for the next probably two hours. They didn't say, but way better than driving on the main busy highway and hopefully we're going to find a few more creatures. So if you look at that, we now have tarred roads. We're in a much more sort of mountainous area. Big change of scenery. And things are going to get a lot more different real soon. So let's get this drive done and head out to the new spot. In